Glory be to the name of our train God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yesterday, today, and forevermore. I greet and welcome you all to this English service. May the name of the Lord alone be glorified. Today, we are going to begin a new series. Particularly, there is a rise of cults who call themselves as Christians but deny the essentials of Christian faith. Their growth is unstoppable now. They are growing far and wide. They create a lot of confusion within Christians. They try to deceive as much as people they could, particularly they target born again Christians. They attack the deity of Christ, the person of the Holy Spirit, salvation by grace through faith alone and the atonement of Christ. They attack all the essential fundamental doctrines of Christian faith. God willing, in the weeks to come, we will expound and expose the one of the main non-Christian cultic moments of today called Jehovah's Witnesses. Their history, their beliefs, and their practices, and what as a church we must do to save God, our community. But before getting into that, I want to first impart you on the importance of Bible doctrine. Because Jehovah's Witnesses or other non-Christian cults, they always speak about doctrine. But they provide false doctrine. They speak about doctrine, but they believe and teach doctrine that is contrary to scripture. So, if we are not having the correct understanding of biblical doctrine, we cannot expose them. We cannot defend the church, our local church. So, first I am going to lay a foundation on what a Christian should believe, what we should believe as a Christian, what is orthodox, then only we can tackle heterodox beliefs. So, today I am going to give an introduction, uh, this is an introductory message, the importance of Bible doctrine, why Bible and doctrine is so important. So, you may be familiar with the word doctrine, theology, but many were reluctant to get into it and study it. Some out of fear, some believe it is unnecessary. Some say, why speak about doctrine? It will create a rift in our Christian community. If we go on to speak about doctrine, there will be a rift. So there are many reasons. Many tend to avoid doctrine, but if we were to be delivered, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Without knowing the truth, we cannot be set free. So, what is doctrine? The word doctrine as the root meaning of the word doctrine is teaching or instruction. The root meaning of the word doctrine is teaching or instruction. It is something that is taught, teaching. Doctrine is, you can call teaching as doctrine. The English word doctrine comes from the Latin root meaning to teach. So this is not a sermon. This is a study. So there are some differences between a sermon and a teaching. So this is a teaching, not a, a sermon which we are familiar with. The English KJB Bible, the word doctrine is used about 56 times. Six times in the Old Testament and about 50 times in the New Testament. And also, it carries the root meaning, teaching or instruction. In New Testament, one time, Hebrews, particularly Hebrews 6.1, the word logos, often used for Christ here, 
is translated doctrine speaking of the word of Christ or doctrine of Christ. Also in the New Testament, there are various words that are employed to teach. The word to teach, didasko, is used about 219 times. To teach, to teach is used about 219 times. The Greek word for teacher is translated master about 40 times as a name or a title for Christ. So, you cannot eliminate teaching or doctrine from Christianity. Without doctrine, there is no Christianity. So, we have fundamental set of doctrines. So, this is the meaning of the word doctrine. So, when we get into Bible doctrines, what is Bible doctrine? Doctrines mean teaching or instruction. What is Bible doctrine? Bible doctrines are the teachings of word of God that are organized in a logical fashion. Bible doctrines are those teachings which are organized in a logical order. It should be arrived by inductive Bible study. What is inductive Bible study? So, the various passages of Bible concerning given doctrine it is to be properly interpreted individually. Then they are to be correlated, summarized, and to come to a conclusion, then a final statement has to be made. If a statement is about, is present on a verse concerning the deity of Christ, then that verse has to be expounded individually. Then you have to correlate everything that deals with the deity of Christ. Then, you have to come into a summary and a conclusion. So, Bible doctrine should be arrived by inductive Bible study. You should not impose anything, your presupposition, your preconceived ideas. Here, should, should not come the doct, uh, denominational ideas. Any denomination should not affect your Bible study. So, inductive, induct, to pluck out that is the core meaning. Then, it is to be taught as a deductive process, using a deductive process. What is a deductive process? The general meaning should be stated and it should be supported by specific scripture passages. So, the thing here is, we cannot come to a scripture passage with preconceived doctrinal position and to force that scripture to fit our position. So, that is what cults do. They arrive at the scripture, they infuse their own preconceived, that cultic organization or denominational organization, ideas into that and they interpret that. That is false interpretation. So, we must always allow the Bible to speak for itself. The Bible can speak for itself. So, our process should be, we allow what are the steps to be taken? We allow the scripture to speak to us. We should not impose anything. Let the word of God speak. So, the another word similar to doctrine is called theology. Theology. So, it may seem mere academic to some, non-spiritual to some. Oh, theology is one who is, which is studied by some folks who do not have the Holy Spirit. No. And some say it is only to be studied by pastors or who are going to become a clergy. No. The, the word theology is not found in the Bible. The, the word theology is the compound of two words, theos plus logi. Logi means study of. Theos means the Greek word for God. Study about God. It is the study of God. So, in the contemporary Christian world, particularly the doctrine, Bible doctrine is used to study about uh, on a lay level or a institute level. But theology means it goes deep, deep, deep into some specific and uh, specific areas, seminary level, in a higher grade level. Theology means you are doing, 
theology of god you are focusing your attention upon god so in many areas these two terms are used interchangeably theology means study of god there are many kinds of theology every person is doing theology even if he recognizes it or not a person who thinks about god is doing theology who is god which is not god how god works and how god interacts with people how god deals with people this is theology even if we believe it or not every person is doing theology but the thing is are we doing theology in a biblical manner that we have theology that is grounded in scripture is our understanding of god grounded in scripture that it that is what we are to think about so theology and doctrine we cannot separate it from our christian life so these are the main two words theology and doctrine and uh, there are various approaches in studying the word of god or studying theology or studying about god paul ends an renowned author has uh, written a marvelous book called moody's handbook of theology a moody's handbook of theology in that book he breaks theology into five divisions first is called biblical theology what is biblical theology this focuses on the study of what was thought at various times during the historical writing of the bible what is biblical theology theology that focuses upon a particular bible book or particular sets of books the theology of paul so that is limited to the writings of paul who is paul what is his revelation of god is revelation concerning sin salvation last things theology of moses what is the theology of moses theology derived from genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy what do those five books say about god say about salvation say about what a man has to do so it is limited to particular books or particular sets of books it recognizes the fact of progressive revelation and what people understood at various periods of time during bible history so if you are doing biblical theology and uh, on pentateuch you cannot impose the doctrine of rapture because the doctrine of rapture is nowhere dealt in the books of moses so it is limited to that particular period and to that particular book so you're not imposing any other thing into that your only uh, only task is to derive what those books say about god the theology of john what is the purpose of the book of john why it is written in the first place what are the words john used to describe about christ what are the miracles he taught he had written about christ that is called biblical theology then the second one is called historical theology this focus upon how christian theological understanding developed historically so for example the doctrine of trinity if you are doing historical theology you have to have a good foundation on the doctrine of trinity from the bible then your focus is upon how the church has interpreted the doctrine of trinity for 20 centuries what are the orthodox and heterodox views who are the folks who have spoken against the doctrine of trinity at various centuries what propelled them to do that and how the church has responded to that you have to be familiar with one thing the church has not started in the year 2020 after covid the church is has is started the church was started the day of pentecost so we have a wealth of knowledge of about 20 centuries this is a very interesting subject you know a lot of controversies have come against the church of god a lot of enemies have uh, stood against the church of god doctrinal enemies ethical enemies lot of problems the church had overcome all those things 
and the true church had stood the test of time. So, historical theology focuses upon church history. So, that is historical theology. Third is called dogmatic theology. This focuses on the teachings of various theological schools or positions, Cal Catholic theology, Reformed theology, Armenian theology, Baptist theology, or cultic theology, Jehovah's Witnesses theology. So, this study is limited to denominational understanding. What are the doctrines which this denomination believe and why they believe that? Why did they come to that conclusion concerning that doctrine? So, if you have to research on the doctrinal perspective of Jehovah's Witnesses, if you study about their history, you will come to know why they are teaching many things which they do believe. So, dogmatic theology is limited to denominational understanding. Why this church or why this particular pastor or teacher or author is adhering to those beliefs. And fourth is called contemporary theology. It focuses on current theological issues and approaches. Frequently, these involve perversions of the group truth of scripture. A lot of theology. Theology means what? Study of God. So, today a person proposes an idea. God is female. In his understanding, God is female. Is, this is his theology. Part of feministic movement. They have their own Bibles. In their Bibles, God is called she. So, there are contemporary issues about God, about salvation. There are a lot of false teachings prevailing today, particularly uh, somewhere speaking about immortal life in this earth. If we believe, if we believe, we will not taste death. Prosperity theology. So, these are contemporary theologies. So, contemporary, this will develop, some will come and go. So, there are some disciplines. And the fifth is called systematic theology. So, this parallels with what we called as Bible doctrine. First, you have to focus upon a passage. You have to interpret according to its context. Then you have to gather similar, the, you have to gather similar verses. Those that speak about that same truth. And you have to systematize that according to different heads. And you have to arrive at a summary and a conclusion. This is called systematic theology. So, a person can tackle any kind of cultic movements if he is well versed with these theologies. First, he has to have a systematic idea that is Bible doctrine. Then he has to know about biblical theology, specific doctrines on the specific books of Bible. Then he has to know about historical theology, then dogmatic theology, then contemporary theology. So, if he is familiar with these five elements, he can tackle any movement or any teaching which is contrary to the Bible. That will be easy for him. So, if he is well versed with these five things, he is knows about, he knows about contemporary scenario, he knew about church history, he knew about the, uh, denominations, he knew about Bible. So, this is the order, this is the method which Paul ends in, in his Moody Handbook of Theology had given to us. So, in systematic theology, theologians systematize Bible doctrine under ten main headings. There are many, even many subdivisions within that, but Primarily, there are ten headings. First is called Bibliology, the study of the Bible. A complete study of how Bible came into us and how Bible is the inspired word of God, how the books of the Bible were chosen as inherent word of God, how we came to know, how we are sure that this book of James is inspired by God, this book of Revelation is inspired by God. What about those books which are not allowed in the Bible as the scripture of God. What are the books which were rejected? How about those? And 
biblical inerrancy the work of god the holy spirit in giving the bible the transmission of the bible and all everything about bible which every believer has to know then is called theology proper the study of god what are the approaches in studying about god what are the various views about god who god is who god is really not here comes god the studies on god the father god the son and the god the holy spirit trinity false views about god works of god attributes of god and so on and third one is called christology doctrine about christ his eternal nature deity things about the pre incarnate christ how christ revealed himself in the old testament and his incarnation and his hypostatic union two natures of christ united in one person and his divinity and his humanity and things about his divinity things about his humanity and his earthly ministry and the works of christ and his death resurrection ascension session and his intercession and his uh, second coming and his eternal rule everything about christ then the third thing pneumatology the doctrine of holy spirit the holy spirit is a person he is god he is not uh, power as some falsely claim and his attributes and his works in the old testament and the new testament and his works with regard to believer we got to human before he receives christ as his personal savior what are the things which he is which he is doing in the life of believer what can grieve the grieve holy spirit what are the gifts of the spirit fruits of the spirit and uh, seal of the spirit and so on and fifth is called angelology the doctrine of angels fallen and unfallen angels fallen angels that is satan who was once uh, appointed cher- cherub but fall because of his pride and uh, a group of angels sided with him and they to punished by god and they became as demons and he is known as satan so satanology and demonology is part of angelology what is satan and what he how he operates who are demons and how demons operate what is demon possession how satan works satan how works in this world how satan what is the motive of satan and what is the up until the end of satan is discussed in the bible and uh, angels unfallen angels the ranks of angels cherubim seraphim archangels and the ministry of angels to christ and the ministry of angels the work of angels and the ministry of angels to the new testament believer and so on an anthropology the doctrine of man who is man how man was created why man was created in the first place and what are the duties of man why god created man in the first place to manifest his glory for his purposes for god's purposes and uh, what are the privileges given to man he was created in god's image he was not a result of evolutionary well, he was not a result of evolution that is proposed and uh, made popular by charles darwin so he was created by god so anthropology deals with humanity and other things particularly god created many other things but subdued everything under human kind other plants and trees and animals and so on and next is called homarchiology the doctrine of sin how sin entered in the human race what is sin homarchia means missing the mark what is missing the mark things which a person does which they were not supposed to do and the things which people do which they are not supposed to do and refrain from doing which they were supposed to do doing things which we are not supposed to do and not doing things which were supposed to do this is called sin god commanded adam to do something and to refrain from something he did what is forbidden by god you should not eat the of the tree of knowledge of good and evil so he forbade god's commandment he did what is not supposed to do and he did not do what was supposed to do that started from adam and is continuing up until today each and every human being right from their birth were doing this so there are many elements 
when we are in the doctrine of sin. So, next is called doctrine of salvation. So, the law of God has portrayed a clear picture on the doctrine of sin and the fallen nature of mankind. And what is salvation? What is the need for salvation? How God saved, saves people today? There comes the sacrificial atonement of Christ that is prefigured in the Old Testament sacrifices and uh, so on. So, what are the benefits of when a person is saved, how a person is to be saved? The only way to be saved that is to accept Christ. There is no other way to be saved. The meaning of the word salvation. Salvation to be means to saved. Tamil Rachipu, that is Sanskrit phrase, means saved. Jesus means savior. He is to save his people from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the presence of sin. That will take place, that will take place at three stages. Penalty of sin, at the moment of a person is believing the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is saved from the penalty of sin. And in his Christian life, he is being delivered from the power of clutches of sin, in his life. It is not a momentarily process, but it's a long process which will go on until we die. But our sanctification from our presence of the presence of sin is only at eternity because up until we leave this world, we will face problems. We will face temptations. So the about salvation and about his nature and security and how God is glorified in saving humanity. Then it's about ecclesiology, doctrine of church. The main program of God today is church. God is building his church today. What is church? What is the purpose of church? Who is building the church? Many people say, my church. Only Jesus could say that, my church. We are all co-workers. So we all have responsibilities, duties. No one should claim, my church, my church, my rules. <laughs> no one could question me. I am everything. So many people believe because some people are gathering in a fellowship. He is their pastor. He believes he is the owner of everything. No. Christ is the owner of everything. So the doctrine of church, when the church is started, what are the things spoken about church? What are the duties of church? Why church is existing in the first place? Church is called as the bride of Christ. It's called as the temple of God. And many things about that. And uh, eschatology, the doctrine of last things. Many people have no regard for first nine things and they will only speak about Jesus is coming again and uh, that is happening here, this is happening here. Uh, cockroach is uh, flying and uh, mosquito is roaming. If anything happens, Jesus is coming again because mosquitoes will bite much. Because of scorching heat, these are last days because no one has experienced so much heat up until today. If a person do not have a proper understanding of first nine categories, he will certainly over-evaluate and amplify, over-amplify many things about end times. So eschatology, we can categorize them into two heads, personal eschatology and public eschatology. Personal eschatology means what will happen after I die? That is personal. And first, public eschatology or general eschatology means what will happen to this world next? What is going to be happening, happening next? How this world will end? Rapture, second coming of Christ, his rule, and so on. So, these are the main ten heads under systematic theology. There are also many categories. Christian life. There is a doctrine called Christian life. Many categorize that under doctrine of church. How a Christian should conduct himself 
in private and in public how a christian should live how an what is the, what are the qualifications of a elder what are the qualifications of a pastor what are the qualifications of a deacon so they are dealt in that area one qualification of a pastor is he should not be a new convert novice that means in tamil it is called nodana shishan nodana shishan arka kudadan meipanu kuriyadagudi so a person cannot be saved today and not become a can should not become a bible teacher by tomorrow or day after tomorrow he should not become a pastor by tomorrow day after tomorrow or within a month so because he has to study a lot about god because he is going to proclaim about god god is so and so so people are going to hear from him so he has to make sure that he is speaking about the true god true nature of god and the true works of god so he should make sure that the name of god is not put in vain from his sermons or from his writings so that are all dealt in christian life and uh, today a new stream of study within systematic theology has come up called israelology the role of nation israel past present and future what is the because most of our bible is written primarily to the jewish people so we cannot eliminate israel from our bible we cannot eliminate the nation israel so what is the plan of god concerning the jewish people the past the present and the future so there are also many sub categories but these are the main heads the doctrine of the bible the doctrine of god the doctrine of christ doctrine of holy spirit doctrine of angels fallen and unfallen doctrine of man doctrine of sin doctrine of salvation doctrine of church and doctrine of last things so every major cult distorts these the truths from these 10 pillars every cultic movement distorts the basic truths from these these are main 10 pillars of christian faith the every cult in one way or the other they will distort they will distort the truths of the bible they will distort the truths about god distort the truths about christ distort the truths about holy spirit distort the truths about angels distort the truths about humans distort truths about sin and distort truths about salvation distort truths about church every cult will call themselves as the only true church in the world that is the mark with church or an organization they will say we will will never be saved apart from our church apart from our church there is no salvation we are the only true church this is that is the mark of their cultic element so their christ is different their holy spirit is different there are many things their eschatology is also very different so major cults deviate from every doctor every doctor they will one way or the other deviate from every fundamental truth they will distort those truths so the final thing i want to mention to you is so what is the proper approach to do a doctrinal study so what are the requirements or prerequisites for a person to study doctrine he must be saved if a person is not saved in the first place he will never ever will be able to know bible doctrine correctly because in apostle paul in first corinthians chapter 2 he says apostle paul in first corinthians chapter 2 he says and in verse 14 but the natural man receiveth not the things on but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he knew them because they are spiritually discerned so it is impossible for a natural man 
to comprehend the things of God. Also in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 he explained this same truth. Second, he must have a basic acceptance of Bible as God's truth. The biblical authority. Whenever I get to counsel a person with regard to any of his problems, the first question I ask is, have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? Because if he has not accepted Jesus as his personal savior, the first thing he has to do is to accept that. Otherwise, all my labor is vain. So God's helping hand will not be for him. So second, he has to, will, is he accepting Bible as God's inherent word? If a person is not accepting Bible as God's inherent word, what is the use of me counseling? Exhorting is exhorting. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 7 expounds the truth. All scripture is inspired by the Spirit of God and is profitable for doctrine, correction, reproof and instruction is in righteousness. All scripture, not parts of scripture, all, every word of the Bible. For doctrine, first doctrine, what is right and reproof, what is wrong and uh, what is right and what is wrong and then how to get right. And finally, a person gets right with God and how to continually to please God. Instruction in righteousness. And third, a person, before he is taking a doctrinal study, has to rely on the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the author of scripture. Without the help of God the Holy Spirit, our mission will become futile. That is what is recorded in John chapter 16 verses 12 to 15. And verse 13, he says, When the Spirit of He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, for, but whosoever He shall hear, that He, he speak, and He will show you the things to come. 14, And He shall glorify Me, for He shall receive of Me. So, this became fruition in the life of disciples. God, the Holy Spirit, has revealed all truth to the disciples and they have recorded that in the Bible. God the Holy Spirit had revealed every truth that, it's, that is to be revealed and they were recorded because of the superintending work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the authors so that they have re recorded everything without any error. So, and what he says, and he shall glorify me a simple doctrinal test is every doctrine which does not glorify Christ and does not lead into a holy life is not from God. Every teaching that does not glorify Christ because he says Holy Spirit will glorify me and does not lead into a holy life is a false doctrine. So, why? Because human experiences were alone well, is not sufficient to help us to know what our life, what our lives, future lies in heavens and what about eternity and what about the nature of God and everything. So, God had stepped in and had revealed us everything in his world. First John 2, 27. But the anointing which he have received of him abideth in you and he did not that may any man teach you. So, even though there is a work of the teachers of God instructing people, but primarily without God's work within a life, in a life of believer, everything is futile. That is why even though many have received hundreds of sermons, we can when we quote sermons or preach and sermons or preach, some people have never changed a bit because they had not let God the Holy Spirit work in their lives. Without God transforming first, no human can change anyone. That is uh, important. First, God has to change a person. Our preaching may boost that person to turn him to God. But without God changing a person, without he is saved, 
our preaching or and our effort will not make a full fruition so and fourthly we must approach the study with humility this is very very important because we are frail and humans who have very little knowledge very little knowledge about everything so when studying about god god is one who is incomprehensible so it is not a light thing to study about god and his marvelous ways and his deeds and the eternal plan of god if you take a moment to think about the eternal plan of god before god created everything he looked into future and he saw that if man is created in the first place he will if he is given a free will he will chose to go against god and god had planned a remedy for that and god had laid the foundation jesus is called as the slain lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world so so the works of god this is marvelous so if a person is proud he will not receive anything so we will never understand everything about god and his word a person cannot lift his collar and say i have understood everything no need for me to come to fellowship again i have studied this book nothing more to study nothing more to meditate blah 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 no this life is not enough for us to comprehend god but we should move on and move on until god gives his opportunity and finally we must allow us the study to impact our lives in the how we worship and how we live so only head knowledge is not enough i have mastered bible doctrine i have md mth that were good necessary but that alone is not helpful that must come fruition in our lives philippians chapter 1 and verses 9 to 11 and be 19 to 11 and this i pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by jesus christ unto the glory and praise of god what he says your love may abound yet more that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may sincere so abound more in now love and in knowledge so ab- abound more in love and in knowledge and produce unto the glory and praise of god so our doctrinal so i see many people some people i have been teaching the bible for nearly i have been preaching for nearly 13 years and i have been teaching to students for about more than 7 years when some people grasp many important truths the doctrine of salvation oh i am saved so many were became prideful and they mock other some for uh, other christians who are not familiar with some biblical truths what i say is what is the scenario of you for the past many years so you have received some light it is not to boast it is not to make yourself proud so this guy does not do anything many folks are in youtube they have received some light and they are boasting oh this is a false teacher nobody knows anything only i know everything so that is false it will not produce godly life so our doctrinal understanding should produce humbleness and should mature us so i close this exposition with a reference of scripture romans chapter 11 Romans chapter 11 and 33 and 34 33 and 34 oh the depths of the riches both of the of the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgments 
and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the lord or who hath been his counselor or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him for are all things to whom be glory for ever and ever o oh, the depth of the riches of both the knowledge and wisdom of god every cult will not focus his attention towards the glory of god but will focus upon their organization upon upon themselves i my revelation i am the superior teacher in the world i my group so in every cultic movement god is not glorified so when we study doctrine we should all be all struck and we should glorify god so we have expounded upon the introduction to bible doctrine and in the following week if time permits and we should discuss many things why christians they have the same bible but why many interpretations why many denominations and why cults will arise out of him what makes a cult different from a christian denomination what is the difference between a denomination and a cult and what are the criteria for a person or a congregation to be called as cult so no local church this world is perfect entirely perfect the progress is different a church may be very progressing towards sanctification in the knowledge of god other fellowships but no congregation is fully perfect every local congregation believers have some weaknesses but what differentiates a cult from a local church so if god permits we are going to do that in the next session may the name of the god be glorified